Howdy folks, Steampunk Desperado here. This week I have a short video of historical interest. It involves a trip that Mrs. Desperado and I made to a small town not far from our Phoenix area home called Wickenburg. And we were partly trying to get away from the heat. It's a little cooler there. It's a little higher elevation. And also there's some very interesting historical sites there which we've been reading about. Now, this may not be the most frequent tourist destination, there's a lot of others that are cooler or farther into the desert and a little bit more artsy, but it was an interesting place. And I call Wickenburg the forgotten heart of Arizona because it played a great role in the development of the state because it is the home of the Vulture Mine. And this mine was discovered by Henry Wickenburg way back in the 1860s, and he also founded the town that bears his name. And this mine produced gold and silver, millions and millions of dollars worth, from the 1860s all the way up to 1942. And because of the mine, there was all these people coming to mine the gold, and there was a lot of equipment being sold and so forth. But the town of Phoenix, which was probably no more than a village, and Phoenix grew rapidly because it was needed to supply Wickenburg and other mining towns, but Wickenburg particularly was very wealthy mine with all this gold and silver, and of course a lot of the other areas, uh, such as Miami, yes there's a Miami, Arizona, was big in copper, which is why we're called the Copper State. In fact, Wickenburg was almost made the territorial capital at one time. It narrowly lost out to Prescott. So Prescott was the capital for a while, Tucson was the capital for a while, and then when it became a state, it stayed with Phoenix. So Wickenburg could have been a lot bigger, depending upon circumstances, but I think the people who live there are probably very happy it's not. So there were some interesting occurrences there, some fairly tragic. One was the Wickenburg Massacre, which happened in the 1870s. A uh, stagecoach came through. It was a very notorious Indian raid. There was some notable people, like there was a journalist on board. His name was Frederick Wasbrook Loring. And so I'm showing his picture here, kind of an interesting character. He was going to write about the West. He didn't make it very far. And so the Yavapai tribe, they were kind of angry, and they were running around attacking settlers. Now, what had happened earlier was that some of the chiefs had made peace with the white settlers, but there was some discontent and some radicals that killed the peaceful tribal elders and went on to start attacking the whites again. And during the Civil War, those forts were closed down or undermanned, so the local natives took advantage of that in order to try a, and get a little revenge on the settlers. We also saw some articles about a rather more interesting occurrence where a Mormon family was traveling out in a wagon train. They were going west of California. This was like the 1850s. And they were going to settle in California. So they were traveling in a small group going by themselves and some of the, some of the people at the last watering hole, Maricopa Wells, they said, don't go on. The Indians are not very peaceful. But they went anyway. They got attacked, and only two people survived. Two of the young children, the Oatman girls. So these two young girls, they were taken by the Yavapai as slaves and later sold to the Mojave tribe, which were a lot more mellow and peaceable people. <laughs> And they decided that they wanted to treat these girls as members of the tribe. In fact, the chief adopted them. And so these girls were being raised as Mojave. And as time went on, one of the girls died. It was a rough life, you know, and they didn't always have enough food to eat. But the older girl, Olive, she survived and was basically raised as a full member of the tribe. Later on, some white folks finally found her and rescued her, brought her out, and she gave a number of lectures to people about what it was like living with the Indians. Though later on she became unhappy, she kind of missed that life. She was accustomed to that, so she went back and lived with her people, the Mojave. 
Besides that, Wickenburg has a number of historical sites, places of note, and the city has a little walking tour. They put up some public art and a lot of statues and so on, and they have a little brochure that shows you where to find them, which is fun. So we went on that, and we took a few pictures while we were doing that. We started with, welcome to Wickenburg, of course. And there's the train depot where people would come in. Uh, it's got ATSF on it, Atchison, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. And it's the world's shortest train. It's got an engine, coal car, and caboose. But here's the caboose, and here's me breaking the rules and climbing on it. Not really, I didn't climb all the way up. And here is the school marm. This statue is by the train depot. She's supposed to represent an actual person, I think. Mrs. Desperado, looking on. The glasses, somebody left those on her. And here's her letter of introduction. So it's a very cool little lending library here. <laughs> and here is the owner of the Hasiyampa Hotel. An African-American lady made it big in this town. Probably one of the few black people there. Here's a signpost for Valentine Street and the very cool cowboy hats. Here's a fun name for a clothing store. Here is a portrayal of a native woman in the statue. Here's a cowboy giving thanks for rain after a drought. Here's another cowboy with his dog. He's reading the news. Dogs. He's entertaining the dog. The jail tree. They had no jail. So they had to chain the crooks to the tree. There's the tree. And Here's a couple jailbirds here being detained. And next we have a caballero singing his songs. And here's the cowboy and the saloon girl with Mrs. Desperado behind. And here she's getting kind of involved in the discussion. Next we have the memorial site of the Wickenburg Mass Massacre, which is kind of out of town. And there really wasn't much to see but this plaque. And we also went by this dude ranch, because it was a big area in dude ranches. I guess Gable, Clark Gable, and Lombard got married there. And the Vulture Mine, which founded the town. And here's Mrs. Desperado by Wishing Well. And also another Native woman statue. And we have a Mexican restaurant we went to, a very good place, with some interesting political signs within. Definitely a conservative area, as you can see. Here is the old prospector. He kind of reminds me of Sasquatch. And there's Henry Brickenberg himself with Mrs. Desperado's sunglasses on. <laughs> and a fake heel monster. He's like simulated wildlife in this little park. Also the Roadrunner. I see a lot of real ones around where I live. And finally, there's, well, here's a rodeo cowboy. He was a famous rodeo cowboy from the area. And here is a simulated rattlesnake, a lot more pleasant to meet than the real one. Here's a cafe we went to in the morning, the Horseshoe Cafe, very quaint with all the kitschy stuff on the walls, and we'll end with this sign. And tragically, Henry Wickenberg supposedly died by his own hand later on. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, maybe he got cheated out of his wealth. I'm not sure how that went. Now, unfortunately, we were very foolish in that we didn't do our research completely, and we didn't realize that the vulture mine actually had tours. Next time we go up there, we'll definitely see some of that. There's an article on Wikipedia where we found all these cool pictures. So, some of these show what we would have seen, including the assay office. Cool-looking building with a very sloppy sign. Then we have Rita's Bordello. There's a saloon and stuff, too, and so on. But there's also Henry Wickenberg's original home. This is where he settled, in Vulture City, rather than the town that bore his own name. That's it for my little summary about Wickenburg, the forgotten heart of Arizona. Hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. It helps us get out the good steampunk word and also to do these things about history once in a while. For now, this is Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.